Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we'll continue talking about light. Um, the previous lecture was dedicated to uh, corpuscular theory of light. Now, today we will talk about the wave theory of light. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. Uh, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website from the unizor.com. Um, uh, even if you found it somewhere else, like on YouTube, etc. Um, first of all, because this lecture is part of the course, which means there is a prerequisite and there are some other lectures which are related to this. There is a whole course which is prerequisite for this, which is called Mass for Teens on the same website. And you can get into this lecture from the website by choosing the menu um, Physics for Teens, uh, and then Energy, and then Energy of Light. Okay, um, also I have to mention that every lecture on this website is complemented by the textual part. This, these are notes, basically. Uh, you can read it as a textbook, basically. Um, sometimes it contains some more um, uh, illustrations or references, I mean the textual part. Uh, sometimes it might be a little bit more precise. Uh, as far as the numbers are concerned, than I'm using in the lecture. So it's much more uh, beneficial for you to use the website rather than just the lecture uh, found somewhere. Uh, and the site is free, by the way. There are no strings attached, uh, no advertisement, not, not, nothing. All right, so let's talk about the light as the waves. Um, well, um, let's start with something which I have basically finished the previous lecture about corpuscular theory of light. There are certain uh, phenomena, there are certain properties of light which cannot be explained from the corpuscular standpoint. Primarily these are um, interference, uh, diffraction and polarization of light. Well, let's just talk about interference probably as the kind of a major um, manifestation of the um, short, uh, shortcomings of the corpuscular theory. Only the wave theory of light could actually explain the interference uh, property. And uh, primarily it's related to the name of Thomas Young. Um, the brilliant um, English uh, physician and physicist and well, specialist in many different um, subjects, one of those old-style universalists. So he made certain experiments which basically demonstrated this uh, property of interference and here is how it was done. Consider, and I'm talking about the view from above, you have some kind of a screen with two slots and there is a source of light let's say it's parallel from some kind of a uh, I don't know, flashlight or sun yes yeah, sun probably would be better let's say this is the sun rays they are almost parallel you can consider basically them so they go through these and this is the screen where you can see the image, basically. So again, this is a view from the top. Now, if corpuscular theory is the one which explains the property of light, we will have two bright spots here and, spe uh, and here, exactly where the light goes through this. Instead, it's observable, and basically it's such a simple experiment, anybody can actually uh, do it at home. Instead, we had dark and light uh, stripes. Now if these are vertical slits, it's called double slit experiment, then you will have stripes parallel to, let me just do it from the, if you will view it from this side, you will see the bright spot, then the dark spot, then the bright spot again, uh, stripe actually, and then um, uh, light and, 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 and dark are actually interchanging. And the brightest one will be in the middle, which is here. This will be the brightest spot. And then two dark around it. Then two light 
again around them, them but they are a little bit darker so the the brightness is decreasing as we are moving from the center isn't that interesting now it's very important these lights to be these two slits to be close to each other then the closer they are the more uh, visible this type of a picture will be so we are talking about this particular uh, observation which basically renders the whole corpuscular theory invalid so to speak so we, ha we have to explain it somehow now is it explainable from the wave theory of light if, if light is the wave well actually you might observe similar interference picture when you are uh, observing the water let's say you have a, a very still basin of water and you have two points very close to each other where some kind of a object is touching the surface of um, of the water. Now, if these points are on some kind of a flexible, uh, like a steel, for instance, rod, which can vibrate, and these are vibrating up and down, let's say this is a steel and we are vibrating this, so they're touching the surface. Now, there will be waves around it, right? Each one will produce certain waves. Now, what's interesting is that you will see this kind of an inter interference picture where you will see certain spots to be basically um, uh, standing still without, without actually uh, vibrating and certain spots around them to be vibrating a little bit more and then again not vibrating, etc. So how that can be explained? Well, from the wave theory it can be explained because these are waves and they are coming in uh, crests and troughs, right? So you have a crest and then you have a trough. Again, crest and the trough. And then you have another one. And they are spreading in all different directions from these points, right? So there are certain points here and here and here and here where both waves are coming but they have different distance. Now, if this is straight in the middle, for instance, then the distance will be the same from both sources of waves, right? And if the distance is the same, then the crest of one wave will correspond to the crest of another wave, and they are actually adding together. So if these are so-called in phase, which means crest corresponds to crest and trough corresponds to trough, then the result will be like addition of these two. It will be significantly more. It will be double, basically. Much higher amplitude. Now, if, however, the difference in distances between uh, this and this, between two sources to this point, are such that this wave is shifted by half um, uh, wavelengths, so the picture is like this, the crest corresponds to trough. So what happens if they add together? They nullify each other. So here it's the same thing, basically. If light is wave, then whenever the distance between these two sources of light and the point is uh, the same, that will be the bright spot, because the light plus light would be light, right? Now, however, uh, um, if the distance is different, then it all depends whether these two waves are coming in phase or out of phase. And obviously, if you are deviating from this point to any direction, if this is the equal difference, then a little bit further, let's say up, the difference, this one will dec decrease and this one will increase. So there might be such a point where these waves are coming into counter phases, so out of phase, and that, that will be the, the, the dark spot. And then again, the distance will be uh, equal to uh, even number of waves in both cases, and that would be the light spot, and then it would be 
again dark and at light etc and same thing if you move this direction and obviously the brightness will decrease because the less and less the greater distance will be and le uh, less less visible uh, light will be so this is the so-called double slit experiment which again is very very simple it's explainable it's explainable the same the same way as you see the waves um, on the water and that's why it produced actually the um, uh, opinion of the physicists that light is probably uh, the wave now if this is a wave then look at this um, th these waves on the surface of the water what exactly do we have as characteristics of the wave well we obviously have the amplitude the deviation from the middle right we have the length lambda usually the wavelengths right well actually a little bit further from zero to zero yes this is the wavelengths and it repeats itself and there is a speed of propagation of the wave how fast this crest moving towards whatever wherever wherever it's moving so we have these very important characteristics we have speed of the crest or, or the wave um, propagating through space we have uh, lambda which is the uh, wavelengths and we also have the amplitude of the wave now there is also another characteristic of uh, uh, of the wave which is uh, spreading uh, uh, along the space along the straight line in the space its frequency now the frequency is number of waves per second so to speak now um, what is speed speed is distance per second right uh, and what is lambda lambda is the wavelength so if you divide speed by lambda this is distance by uh, distance which is covered in let's say in meters lambda is the length of the wave in meters so if we will divide one into another we will have number of uh, wave lengths per second which are crossing uh, any particular point so the frequency and speed and the uh, wavelengths are related through this very very simple um, equation and obviously all the uh, derivative of this equation like this one for instance that's all the same so these are characteristics of light which and we will talk about this when we will talk about optics which can be uh, measured by this picture of um, interference so by knowing the distance between let's say the bright spots and uh, the distance between these slits and the distance between this and this we can actually determine these characteristics okay so um, there are some other properties of the waves like diffraction and polarization which are also explainable through the wave theory but I will reserve all these explanations towards the part of this course which is dedicated to optics. For now, let's just come to an understanding that all these properties can be explained through the wave theory. More than that, even corpuscular properties, uh, which is like um, the light is uh, spreading uh, along the straight line for instance and, and some other corpuscular properties um, like photo effect for instance um, they are also can be explained through the wave theory so the wave theory um, at the end of the, the 19th century beginning of the 
of the 20th century actually became a dominant opinion of the physicists. Okay, with corpuscular theory it was kind of easy to imagine that certain um, uh, corpuscles are propagating through the space. Let's say sun is the originator, the source, and they are emitted by the sun and traveling through the space. That's fine. With wave, you see the wave, for instance, on the water needs water, right? So that's very important. We need the carrier of the waves. And with light, although it displays very important properties of the wave, people really didn't know what actually carries these waves. So they came to uh, an opinion that there might be some substance called ether, sometimes letter A in the front, they, they, they spell differently. So this ether is some kind of a substance which is, uh, it, it exists like everywhere because the light goes everywhere, right? And uh, the oscillations of this substance actually makes the light to propagate. Now, initially, they were thinking that the light is propagating through the ether exactly the same way as sound waves, which is also waves. Sound waves propagate through the air. Now, how does that sound? It's, it's the waves of compression. It's a longitudinal. So if sound there is directed that way, then the waves are directed this way, that way. We are compressing the air, and then the compressed air transfers this compression to the next molecules and this one becomes less compressed and then again and again and again as far as the sound while while I'm producing certain uh, uh, sound then the the air is compressing this way further and further from me so it's longitudinal longi longitudinal tudal, um, oscillations at the same time there are certain aspects of um, light, like polarization, which, which we will talk about, they kind of contradict this. So, um, you see, the concept of ether was actually challenged in so many ways, in so many ways, that eventually physicists had to basically discard it. Uh, it cannot be really like penetrating everywhere because uh, it just, you know, we don't really feel it, we don't really uh, um, have any kind of uh, tools which can m measure it or uh, check its density or something like this. I mean, it was so um, ephemeral, if you wish, so uh, unreal that physicists just had to discard the theory which left light by, by itself, basically. So it's waves, but we don't really know how it propagates. Well, then a little later, um, the famous uh, physicist James Maxwell, um, he was experimenting with something, and then he came with a theory of electromagnetic field, and all of a sudden he found that the speed of propagation of electricity in the wires is very much alike with the speed of light. And he was the one who basically suggested that maybe um, light is just the propagation of electromagnetic field. And we don't know much about fields, I mean from the um, from the sense of understanding what exactly this is. But we do know the properties of the fields. We know the property of the electric field, of magnetic field, we know how they interact, etc., etc. So these are all properties which we can measure. And uh, Maxwell actually came up with famous Maxwell equations which describe electromagnetic field and basically describe the way how light can propagate as the uh, oscillation of electromagnetic field. It's like a variable electric field produces variable magnetic field, which is in turn producing variable electric field, etc., etc. So it's self-propagating. Again, we will talk about this in more, de in more details when we will talk about electricity and magnetism. But for now, from this perspective of 
light as just what it is, um, it's probably enough to stop here saying that this, this electromagnetic theory of light really explained a lot. Practically all the properties of light, whatever we are observing, the wave properties of light, corpuscular properties of light, they all can be explained in the framework of, um, of the uh, oscillation of electromagnetic field. Um, so, ITER was rejected. Instead, we have electromagnetic field, which is the carrier of, um, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the light. Well, the last, well, nail, if I can say so, um, uh, to the uh, theory of ether was famous experiment uh, of uh, Ma Michelson and, and Motry. Now, this experiment proved that the speed of light does not depend on the speed of the source of light. So that's very, very important. So if you have here some kind of a recipient of light, and this is the source of light, whether the source goes this way or goes this way, the speed of light, which light covers while traveling this distance, so if we go from here to here, and at that moment we just um, emit the light, or we go from here to here, and at this point, exactly the same point, we emit a light. In both cases, this guy will see the light at exactly the same time, which proves that the speed of light is the same regardless of whether we move left or right with any speed. Well, this was an experiment of Michelson and Motry. If ether was the carrier of light, we obviously had to observe different speeds, so something is not right. So this experiment was actually the last point on rejection of the ether in, the fa in favor of uh, using electromagnetic oscillations, electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves um, as the explanation of the, um, of the nature of light. Incidentally, this same experiment was the starting point for special theory of relativity um, uh, developed by Einstein. We'll talk about this maybe sometime. So, what else is interesting? Um, well, basically that's, that's, all, that's all I wanted to talk about and introduce you to the concept of light as the oscillation of electromagnetic field which basically carries itself. It does not depend on any kind of a surrounding substance where these waves are located. And another important thing is, when we were talking about waves in the ether, which are like compression waves, like sound waves in the air, we were talking about longitudinal um, oscillations. From the electromagnetic theory of light, it's actually the transversal it's uh, it goes across so if go if light goes this way the oscillation goes this way it's more or less like on the on the surface of water so when water waves are going they are going up and down while they're um, propagating uh, along the straight line along the surface of the water right so it's perpendicular to the direction of propagating so that's the same thing with electromagnetic um, field waves. And that basically completes my explanation of nature of light as the wave, as the wave theory. Now, obviously there is a continuation of this. There are lots of calculations which we can do, especially considering these major characteristics of light and how much energy is carried by the light, but that would be in some other uh, lectures dedicated to this. Okay, so that's it. I do suggest you to read the uh, textual part of this lecture on unizor.com. Just go to Physics 14 course, find the energy uh, in the menu, and go to the energy of light. That's where you will find this lecture together with textual 
notes which I do recommend you to read. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.